Have you just returned home from the hospital with your newborn baby or you have a two, one, three month old baby and you're not quite sure what to do with them when they're awake? Well, stay tuned as I talk about some really simple activities that you can do in the home, which will ensure your baby's stimulated during this wake period and also works on those foundational skills required for gross motor skills, fine motor skills and communication. Hi, if you're new to my channel, my name's Emma. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and mum to two gorgeous children. And so before we talk about what activities you can be doing with your baby at home, I think it's really important to acknowledge that when you come home with a newborn baby, particularly if it's your first newborn baby, it's really quite overwhelming and you might be under the impression that your baby's gonna be awake for a long period of time and you're gonna have to fill that time with lots and lots of activities actually not true in the first two to three months of your baby's life they will sleep a lot so they sleep anywhere from 15 to 16 hours in a 24-hour period and they're generally only awake for 40 to 120 minutes and after that period of time they'll need to have a sleep during that wake period you're going to be breastfeeding or formula feeding your baby and in those first few weeks that can take a really long time as your baby kind of gets established with the sucking motion. The other thing is that you'll need to change their nappy and then you'll have a period of time where your baby's quite content and happy to engage in activities. So during this time when they're really happy, I would recommend doing some of these activities which I'm gonna talk about now. So the first activity I recommend is simply just talking to your baby. What is really cool is that when your baby is a newborn, they can actually recognize your voice over a group of strangers. So you'll actually notice that when you come into a room with people that your baby's not that familiar with and they hear you talk, your baby will actually start to look for you by searching with their eyes they can't actually turn their heads but you'll notice that their eyes are moving to try and find you we know that babies really like hearing their parents voices and they really love facial expressions the other thing we know is that babies at birth um, can see best anywhere from 8 inches to 20 centimeters so generally that's the distance when you're holding a baby breastfeeding or formula feeding that's the distance that they can see best at so when you're talking to your baby if you're holding in their arms they're going to be able to really see your face which is fantastic if you're trying to talk to your baby while they're lying on the floor make sure you're about eight inches or 20 centimeters away from their face because then you'll know that they're going to be seeing all your facial expressions now if you're not that sure what to talk to them about it can be simple things like talking about what you're doing so it might be that you're talking about your day the other reason I recommend talking to your baby is that it actually provides the foundational skills required for communication. So your baby learns to listen. The other thing is that around six weeks, they'll start to smile, which is another great social interaction you can have with your bub. And they'll actually start to coo. Definitely by three months of age, they'll be cooing back to you, which is a really nice way to communicate with your bub. So you'll talk and then you'll pause and then they'll communicate back with you by cooing. Now, if you're not quite sure what to say to your baby, then um, it kind of leads me on to my next activity that I'd recommend, and that is reading books to your baby. If you find it a bit awkward talking to your baby, then reading books to them is a nice way to kind of have something to say um, and kind of guide you in what to say. So you could read books by holding them in your arms, or you could do it while they're lying on the ground. Generally, I would recommend at this age having board books. So they're the really thick books with thick pages. And that's because the thin page books are really easy to tear. And around three months, your baby's gonna be starting to bat and hit things, and that might accidentally tear the book. The other thing is these kind of touch and feel books are really great because you can rub your baby's hands on the tactile parts of the book, which is a nice way to get that tactile input and work on that hand development. The other thing is you'll notice these pictures are very, very bright, which will be something that your baby will be interested in looking at. So reading books is another great activity that you can do with your bub. So the other activity I'd really recommend highly is tummy time. Now, tummy time is simply when you place your baby on their tummy, and it's really important because it works on the neck, shoulder, and back strength, which are all muscles that are really important when your baby learns to crawl, roll, sit up, and walk. So tummy time is really, really important. It's recommended you can start that as soon as your baby returns home from the hospital on their first day. Now, there's lots and lots of different ways to do tummy time. So you'll all know the traditional tummy time, which is where you put the baby on the ground and you might put a rolled up towel underneath their arms to give them kind of more support. 
or you might place your hand on their bottom to give them kind of more support in that position. Now, babies generally won't stay in this position for a long period of time, particularly when they're newborn. It's only a few seconds and over time you'll gradually build that up. So at three months, they should be able to maintain it, that position on the floor with their arms in line with their shoulders and they'll be able to lift their head up quite clearly off the ground and hold that position for a period of time. So initially, Babies mightn't like this position and often parents will come to me and say that they don't like tummy time so they haven't done it. I think you can make tummy time more enticing or exciting for babies. So when they're in that traditional position, so lying on the ground, I would generally recommend that you as parents lie directly in, um, opposite them. And when they're lifting their head, I generally recommend you talk to them, you sing songs. So I actually sing, if you're happy and you know it, lift your head. Um, and then I quickly sing that song, particularly when they're newborn, and then get them off onto their back. So you can make it really fun for the baby. The other thing is that if you're not able to get on the ground or at that period of time, you can use a mirror because babies really love looking at themselves at this age because they love facial expressions. So they'll be able to kind of see themselves in the mirror, not quite knowing it's them, but they'll be seeing all these facial expressions, which is great. And the other thing you could do is place a toy in front of them, which they might look at. So that's one of the tummy time positions. The other tummy time position you can do is um, when you're lying on a couch or in bed with your back slightly reclined, you can place your baby on your chest. Um, this is a really good one that dads can do. And basically you can put your hand on their bottom to give them more support in that position, but they'll look up at you and you'll be able to kind of engage them in communication or again, sing songs. The other tummy time position you can do is called the football hold. So basically your baby's lying in your arms with their head near your elbow crease. So basically you're supporting their head, but you're also giving their body full support and they're lifting their heads for a short period of time, which is working on that neck muscle. So in this position, I actually found it really helpful when my bubs were getting quite fussy when I had them held upright against my chest. I could put them in that football hold, which then meant that they were able to see the world differently and they were kind of happy to be in that position. My sister did this with my niece by holding her in that football hold whilst in, directly in front of a mirror and then they would actually move around and sing and my niece really loved it. So that's another way you can do that position. The next position is where you place your baby across your lap and their body is resting across your lap and they'll lift their head for a period of time and then lower it. So again, they're working on that neck and back muscles. So if your baby doesn't actually like tummy time, I would just try and make it a bit more enjoyable for them and continue to persist with that activity. So I would generally recommend doing tummy time every time your baby has a wake period. And initially you just want to do it for a short period of time, sure they're happy, and then quickly flip them on the back. And as they get stronger, they'll be more happy to stay in that position for a longer period of time. The next activity I'd recommend is um, using a baby gym. I find them extremely beneficial. The great thing about that is that your baby can lie on the ground and they'll be able to look up at the toys that are hanging from the baby gym. At around three months, they'll start to bat those toys. But initially, in the early few months, they would just be watching the toys, which is great because they're visually fixating on a toy and then they're learning to track a toy which is a great skill and it's the foundational skill required when you're working on that hand-eye coordination. So I actually use the um, baby gym a lot. I didn't I don't actually think you need a lot of equipment when your baby's um, or toys when your baby's a newborn to three months. I think the baby gym is one that I would say is a must-have purchase um, and it's really quite nice for your baby. As they get a bit older again, around three months when they start kicking their legs, they'll accidentally kick the bars of the baby gym, which then means the toys will move a bit, which is quite exciting for them as well. The other thing I really like to do with babies is sing to them. Um, now babies really love you singing to them because again, that facial expression's there and they also like the tune. So singing to them is a great way to do it. You can sing standard songs that you know, or you might sing nursery rhymes. If you were anything like me, I actually thought I would never sing to my baby because my voice is atrocious, but turns out I was very wrong. And I often sing to my children even now. And the great thing about nursery rhymes is it's often paired with hand actions. So you could do twinkle, twinkle, little star, which is again, just a bit more enticing for your baby whilst just singing with them. 
Another activity that's really quite a lot of fun to do with your baby is by poking um, faces at your baby. So when they're in your legs, um, so resting them in your legs so that they're facing up towards you, you're at that ideal distance from your baby, so about eight to 12, um, inches to 20 centimeters. And so your baby can see your face. What's really amazing is that from a newborn, your baby's actually able to copy movements of the mouth that you do. So if you smack your lips together, so go and wait, your newborn baby will actually do that movement back to you, which is really exciting. The other fun thing to do is by poking your tongue out at your baby. So again, your baby will copy that movement. You might need to do it a few times so that your baby has the opportunity to watch it and then they'll actually copy it, which is actually pretty exciting. The other activity you can do with your baby is bath times. Now, some babies really like it. My daughter absolutely hated it, but my son liked it. The midwife shared with me a really helpful tip, which might've made my son like it more which is when your baby's in the bath placing a wet face washer on their chest seems to appear to kind of um, give your baby a bit more um, kind of awareness of where they are in space and calm them when they're in the bath so when I did this with my son without that face washer he would get really distressed but as soon as I put that face washer on his chest he was more than happy to stay in the bath and kind of kick his legs around and have lots of fun playing with your baby by holding toys above their face so when they're lying on their back or resting in your lap looking up at you you can get a toy and you get them to kind of look at the toy first so you might get them to hold hold the toy directly in front of their face again remembering it's about eight inches to 20 centimeters away from their face. So first off, your baby will start to just look at the toy and then you can move it around their face and they'll start to follow it with their eyes. They don't have that head control initially, but by three months of age, your baby will be following the toy all the way around their head by turning their face as well. Now, when you're looking at toys for your baby, you will have heard a lot that babies are born, um, when they're newborns, they're only able to see black and white. That's actually incorrect. They can see in color. Um, what they see best is high contrast um, items, so high contrasting colors. So black and white is very high contrast so they can actually focus in and um, they're quite attracted to that but ba basically they can see color um, they just um, prefer that high contrast so toys that I would use with a newborn baby are like these kind of toys because they make a lot of noise you can hang them from the play gym they make crinkly noises when your baby touches them now again remember with toys at newborns all the way up to three months they're not actually able to grasp a toy what they will do at three months is kind of hit toys with their hands um, and when they're newborns they just use their eyes and they really focus on watching the toy babies do have a grass reflex so when you put your finger in their hands so the bottom part of their hands they will automatically close that's the grass reflex and they can't let it go my little boy used to do this all the time and accidentally grab his hair um, and because he had quite a lot of hair at birth he would grab it and then that grass reflex would kick in and then he couldn't let go so I just had to let it go for him so again just a quick tip with that if your baby's accidentally grabbed onto something like their hair or a toy and they can't let it go you just bend their hand at the wrist and their fingers will automatically open and that you'll be able to remove that toy so looking at toys crinkly ones are really good bubs love that i would also use um, kind of these touch and feel crinkly books they're really quite nice when they're on their tummy the newborns um, when, well they'll just look at it but at three months they might start scratching it so then it starts to make that noise for them this is kind of like a high contrast toy so you can see it's a black and white I would just move the rattle around their face um, and again these kind of toys are really easy to do the other things you can use is like those um, they're rain makers so it's quite noisy <laughs> Um, and your baby would like to kind of watch it. And then the rattles I find really helpful. These are really good because when they're a bit older, they can actually hold them. So around four months of age, um, they'll be able to hold these rattles and they're really lightweight. Most toys you get are really, really heavy, which are quite hard to hold when um, you're about four or five months of age, even like six, seven months. So generally really lightweight toys are great. 
um, and in the early stages ones that make lots of noise are fantastic so get the toys out you don't need a lot of toys I would just have a few and cycle through them with your bub um, in the first few months you don't need a whole lot of things and it's just basically your bub enjoys your company the most so if you can engage with them that's great do remember that by the end of the a day they generally get a bit um, clingy and a bit fussy so you might be carrying them a lot more so this kind of leads into my next tip or activity that you can do with the bub which is changing the scenery for them so that might be going for a walk putting them outside on a mat underneath the trees in the shade so they can watch the leaves moving in the wind hear the birds the other thing you might do is put them in a baby carrier because that gives them the different viewpoint of the world also it's really calming for a baby because they can hear your heartbeat and they're nice and secure your baby might get bored <laughs> and um, being on their back all the time or on their tummy so changing their what they're actually looking at will be a great way to kind of make them a bit happier in that period of time the other thing is in the you might want to use a rocker chair which is like a bouncer chair i generally didn't use this at all for my first child but for my second child it was really helpful because i could get the bub off the ground because my two-year-old was really interested in playing with the newborn but sometimes it might get a bit intense and then the newborn would get kind of overwhelmed and turn away and cry so if i put him up in the bouncer Bouncer, then two-year-old could sit beside him and read books um, and not be so much in his face so he was a lot happier so generally in the afternoons babies do get a bit um, whingy because they're a bit tired so they mightn't like lying doing tummy time or lying on their back so much and they might need to be held or in the rocker or go for a walk mm -hmm. also the other heads up is that around two weeks they start to go through this kind of witching period if you want more information on that make sure you check out this video that I made um, which talks about what the witching period is and gives you some strategies that you can use during this tricky time mm -hmm. the other thing is that if you're not sure what your baby should be doing at three months of age check out this video and um, I talk about what they should be doing at three months and give you some more tips and tricks mm -hmm. so thanks for watching I hope you found these activities helpful and you're gonna have lots and lots of fun with your bub feel free to um, share this video with any other parents and if you've liked it hit that like button make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video each week so thanks for watching and I'll see you next week and share more parenting tips and tricks to make your life easier